Hello fellow Jerry Cans. Well, it's Tears of the Kingdom release season now, and I think it's finally for me to talk about one of my favorite video game series, Zelda. Every Zelda fan has their favorite Legend of Zelda game, and if you ask said Zelda fans what their favorites are, they would answer with normie picks like Ocarina of Time or Breath of the Wild, and if you're slightly more base, you would pick Majora's Mask. Now as the guy who has the best objective opinions, my favorite Zelda game is actually Breath of the Wild. My favorite Zelda game is Breath of the Wild, sorry for the popular pick guys, but if you were to ask me what's the most underrated Zelda game, I would have to go with The Legend of Zelda Spirit Trust on the Nintendo DS. Unlike everyone who would talk about Tears of the Kingdom, instead, for today, I want to showcase Zelda Spirit Tracks. This won't be a really in-depth review or retrospective, instead it'll be more of a brief showcase in the hopes that you, the viewer, will try it out someday. I have a laundry list of Nintendo games that I grew up with but not many people talk about and wish they would. Here it is. So hopefully I can make more of these so they can get more spotlight from me. Call it Gearm's Showcase, why not? So let's jump into Spirit Tracks and see why it's so underrated. But first, why does nobody talk about this game? Well, it's because this game did not sell very well, and I don't think Nintendo themselves had much confidence in it during release. It's the second least sold Zelda game if you don't count multiplayer co-op spin-offs, with only 2.96 million copies sold, only beating Minish Cap, which that game might deserve a video one day. To put it into perspective, Pokemon Black and White 2, one of the least selling Pokemon games that came out after our next console was already released, sold 8.52 million. 2.96 million copies is pitiful on a best selling console like the DS. Also, in my home country, Korea, this game was never released. Yep, Nintendo Korea thought this game would not do well or something because it was never released despite almost every major Nintendo game being localized at the time. So I never got to play it on release, and the only reason I might have played this game was because of something called the R4 cartridge. I bought the actual game from eBay overpriced years later, so sue me Nintendo. When it comes to Spirit Tracks, rather than the actual game, two things that were created in this game are more famous. First thing, the train stage that appeared on Super Smash Bros on 3DS. I love that stage and it's a classic, but I think many do not even know where this train thing and Toon Link on a conductor uniform is actually from. Second thing, the main theme of the game titled Full Steam Ahead that has been remixed orchestrated a batch ton of times. It's possibly the greatest main theme that's not the main Zelda theme in the Zelda series. And I swear this one soundtrack is more famous than the actual fucking game. I guess you can say Spirit Tracks has the best track. <laughs> Other than these two things, Spirit Tracks is not much known. And it's a really big fucking shame because there's much more to this game than just the unique train gimmick and the music. So let me finally talk about the game itself. First, let's discuss the controls because this might make or break the game for you. So just like Phantom Hourglass, this came out in the late 2000s when touchscreens blew everyone's mind or something because everything is touchscreen related. This is another 2D Zelda game in the style of A Link to the Past, but you don't move the D-pad, you move Link by moving a cursor around with your stylus, you interact with characters by tapping, even the sword combat is all touch controls, you defeat enemies with taps and swipes, all the items are stylus control too, such as using the boomerang to draw a line of its path. The ABXY button in this game is basically a decoration, you don't even press it once I believe. Most of the items and puzzles are well designed for the hardware, and the combat is fun if you get used to it. But I've seen people hate this control scheme, and I understand why anyone would do that. After all, I hate motion controls, and I hate if Skyward Swords got off of motion controls, Wiimo Plus can go fuck itself, so there's that, we're even. Screw the goddamn you Nintendo 2 DS XL's short ass stylus, man. This thing's worse than a toothpick. Even though I like the touch controls, one control that bugs me is surprisingly the microphone. You have to keep blowing on your DS to use certain items, and I kid you not, I got airheaded from constantly blowing my DS too hard. Like most Zelda games, you have to play an instrument, but this time, it's the most realistic instrument in the entire series, because you have to actually blow into the mic like a real flute, and even control it so you hit the right notes. 
is in stark contrast to just waving your hand randomly to play the stupid liar in the next Zelda game. Oh, I would also mention that because of touch screen controls and the microphone thing, this game is a nightmare to play on emulators, PC especially, so don't even try it. I suggest playing on real hardware. Now let's talk about the main feature of this game that differentiates it from the other Zelda games. The most iconic thing about this game, the train. Just like the controls, I think this will make or break the game because I've seen people love this game just for the train, and I've seen people hate this game just for the train. I am the former. I fucking love the train, man. Choo choo, motherfucker. So get this. In other Zelda games, you would go around Hyrule by foot between towns and dungeons, right? Some games had a gimmick to it like boats or flying on birds. Well, this game, this is the Hylian Industrial Revolution. We go around by trains everywhere, baby. You choose a route, you have to make sure you choose the right track at the intersections, you have to make sure not to run into things on track. This is not a relaxing no-brainer travel vacation, you have to defeat enemies and monsters with your train. Even Lost Woods in this game is a maze involving trains. Choo choo, motherfuckers. What's great about this game is that despite the DS's weak hardware, the train makes Hyrule feel really big, almost like an open world game. It takes quite a while to get around. The map is quite big for the DS, and you'll be surprised how big the size of the world is on your first playthrough. There's not even many fast travel spots, so suffice to say, you'll be riding on this train a lot. That's why I'm saying this will make or break the game. I've seen people commenting that it's boring going around Hyrule on trains and it takes forever, and me and the other people love the epicness of traveling through Hyrule on a fierce locomotive. You go through forests, frozen tundras, on top of volcanoes, even across the freaking ocean. Wind Waker and Phantom Hourglass's boats look quaint now, ain't it? Nothing stops the R and horse locomotive. Choo choo, motherfuckers. And you get that aforementioned kick ass song, Full Steam Ahead, that plays every time you ride the train. And it does feel like an epic adventure, which not all Zelda games accomplish sometimes. I like how all the towns are basically train stations. There's a stamp book to collect unique train station stamps, just like real life. There's even a train spotting character in this game that loves to take photos that I can relate to. I'm actually really a big train enthusiast in real life. I ride the Seoul subway every day. I love riding on Mugunwa trains and the uh, KTX Eons, and I love train spotting for Mojave too. I love trains. I love games involving trains like simulator games. I love Zelda games. So Spirit Traps is both a train game and Zelda game. A match made in heaven. Choo choo, motherfuckers. Let me now talk about the story, setting, and characters of Spirit Tracks because it's another aspect that makes the game special to me and is often overshadowed by the train gimmick. What you first need to know is that Spirit Tracks is like the aforementioned Pokemon Black and White 2. It's a bit of a sequel to an already existing game on the DS, that being Phantom Hourglass. But it's not really a sequel because it's self-contained. Hear me out. So Phantom Hourglass is a sequel to Wind Waker, which starred the same Link and Zelda from Wind Waker, Zelda being Pirate Girl Tetra. One of my problems about Phantom Hourglass is that story-wise, it's a very unnecessary sequel to Wind Waker. It's just a random-ass adventure of Link saving Tetra from getting kidnapped Princess Peach style after the events of Wind Waker. Not really compelling. Spirit Tracks, on the other hand, is a direct sequel to Phantom Hourglass that takes place a fall century after the events of Wind Waker and Phantom Hourglass. So at the end of Wind Waker, it ended with Link and Zelda setting off sail to find new land to build a new Hyrule. And Spirit Tracks shows that they succeeded in doing so because this game takes place on the Mew High Road that was found on a Mew continent. I think Wind Waker had the greatest ending to any Zelda game, so getting confirmation that Link and Tetra succeeded and got a happy ending is a nice sentiment I get out of this game. If you're a Wind Waker enthusiast, you will like this game. Very ironic, we're talking about a sequel Zelda game that gave closure to a previous Zelda game on release of a sequel Zelda game that will probably do so too, but I digress. Anyways, what I also enjoy by Spirit Tracks is the unique setting. Maybe it's because they were adjusting the world for a train gimmick, but Hyrule in Spirit Traps is no longer traditional medieval fantasy. No, Hyrule has entered the goddamn industrial age with the invention of the locomotive engine, and I find that really amusing. The game has a bit of a steampunk aesthetic energy to it which makes it different from the other Zelda games, such as not Empire riding around a scooter thing, characters using an actual antique camera, not a magical MacGuffin tablet. 
The game is as filled with detail in the world and character design, and you'll notice if you play it. I guess the reason why the game feels like it has so much heart is because this is a Majora's Mask situation. Just like Majora's Mask being able to make Termina so lively and memorable by reusing Ocarina of Time's assets and focusing more on story and characters, Spirit Traps reused a lot of graphics and assets from Phantom Hourglass and did the same. It also fixed a lot of problems of the previous game too, like there is a central dungeon called Spirit Tower in the game, and it's basically a fixed version of the Phantom Hourglass's Temple of the Ocean King. No more bullshit time limit gimmick and backtracking. Spirit Tower is actually a good dungeon. Even the graphics of this game is really good for the DS in my opinion. Unlike a certain other franchise, all models are in 3D already. All of the cutscenes are animated really well, which is impressive considering the tiny DS screen, and a surprise in my recent playthrough of how cinematic everything is, and how expressive everyone is, due to the Toon Link art style that aids like fine wine. Anyway, Spirit Track Story is fun, it's unique, it's filled with heart, so please give it a chance. I can't say Spirit Track is the best Zelda game, but I can confidently say Spirit Track is the best Zelda game. Huh, you say? I meant Spirit Tracks may not be the best Legend of Zelda game, but it's the best Princess Zelda game. In other Zelda games, I'm not that fond of the character Princess Zelda. She's either just a traditional fantasy princess, or boring stoic elf lady that needs to be saved. They try to subvert the formula sometimes, like Skyward Sword's cliché childhood friend character which I found too pandering and annoying. I liked Wind Waker's Tetra, who was a feisty pirate girl but she lost her personality when she became Princess Zelda. Spirit Trust's version of Zelda is finally the Princess Zelda that I absolutely loved. I think she is still the best version of the character. Okay, so plot-wise, Spirit Trust is not very special. It's just a classic Zelda plot of an evil Demon King villain trying to take over Hyrule and Link stopping him. But because Ganondorf was definitely killed in Wind Waker in this universe, this random Demon King we've never seen before called Malatus is the main antagonist. It's just Ganon, but the Ganon you have at home. Anyway, Pseudo Ganon is trying to take over Hyrule and he's a body. And that's when Princess Zelda comes in. Its underlings kick out Zelda's spirit from Zelda's body, so Maladas can possess her, and Zelda becomes a g g g ghost I love her reaction to finding out that her body isn't gonna be possessed. She finds it disgusting and horrifying. She's very dramatic about it, and she's a bossy lady who orders Lynx to fight Maladas to not save Hyrule, but rather save herself. It's a pretty funny comedy, and her sass against Link is very enjoyable. Her sassy and at the same time very girly girl personality that cannot stand rats makes her really unique in the series. Link and Zelda is a comedy duo in this game, it's really fun. I like how much Zelda is involved in this game too. So in past Zelda games, you always had companion characters in your journey, right? Hayless and Fairy, Talking Ship, Minna. Well in this game, since Zelda is a ghost, they made her the companion character. Maybe it's because of that, this is the first Zelda game that actually ships Link and Zelda together. Keep in mind, previous Zelda games really didn't have Link bonking Zelda and had him bonk other girls. And this came up for Skyward Sword and Breath of the Wild where they really started pushing it, but Siratrax started it. Oh and because Zelda's a ghost, there are sections where she can possess other enemies and you have to solve really well designed puzzles using that. There's a gameplay function to Ghost Zelda folks. If you ever wonder where those weird pink armor costumes that Princess Zelda sometimes control in other games are from, it's from right here. Man, Hyrule Warriors might be another game I should do a video on in the future. There's much more to this game to talk about, such as the game having great side characters. For example, there's this guy with a budget infinity gauntlet named Burn, whose story is really interesting. There's some really great puzzle and dungeon design in this game that is mind blowing for the limited hardware of the DS. Some of the boss battles are hit or miss, there's some crazy side quests, but overall, it's just a really solid and fun video game. I don't want to list out everything that's great with the game because I want you to discover what's great about Spirit Traps for yourself. After all, this is a recommendation video and not a review. Anywho, I did this video just to get out the word on one of my favorite games on the Nintendo DS. Spirit Traps is usually remembered as that weird Zelda game with trains in the mid-2000s or the one where the Super Smash Bros. states came from. And I swear, it's more than that. It's the Zelda game with the unique steampunk setting. It's the one with everything improved from Phantom Hourglass. And it's the only one where Zelda is an actual main character. You could say she's playable.
It's just a real shame this game didn't sell well, because not always the best selling games on a console are the best games. And there are some real pure gems not many people know about on consoles, and Spirit Tracks is one of them. Point is, go out and play it, I don't care how or if you play with a legit copy. I guess my fellow Korean brothers can't play it, but there may or may not be a fan translation mod. I don't see Nintendo re-releasing this game anytime soon on modern consoles, not at least until we have a Nintendo DS Virtual Console, which will probably never happen. Maybe it's time for R4. Alright R4, no 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 no, no nothing too fancy. <laughs> That's it folks. I know everyone will be busy playing Tears of the Kingdom, I know I will. I guess you can say everyone was on the hype train.